So, I am 25, female, and my sister Ella is 31. My husband is Tom and her husband, John. Ella is bi and our parents were religious, so they kicked her out when she brought home a girlfriend in high school. As a result, she never got an inheritance when our mom died. The both of us had cut contact with our parents, but I still decided to accept the money because I figured it's the one good thing to come out of our abusive life, so why not? The legal side of things was finalized a week ago. Ella and John came to see me while Tom was at work and told me that they wanted to talk to me about something important. They said they had exhausted all of their fertility money and didn't have enough to try IVF again. I could see where this was going, so I just said, I'm sorry, Ella, I understand. I was thinking about this as well, and Tom thinks this is the right thing to do. You should have half the money. You deserve it. John tells me that's not what they wanted to talk about, but they wanted all of the money. I'm a bit taken aback. Apparently half won't be enough. So I tell them that I would use my part, or if she didn't want the half, all of it, for my daughter's college fund, and another fund for her to use for whatever she wishes during her teen years. I remind Ella that we always promised each other our children will be financially well off, because we never had that growing up. College is costly where we live, so despite my daughter being only three, Tom and I wanted to start this for her. I tell Ella and John all of this, and Ella is just very upset at this point. John is more willing to have a conversation, though. She comes back from the kitchen and says I'm just rubbing the fact that I'm a mother in her face. I'm angry by this point because I thought she loved my daughter like her own. Ella said I was sabotaging her and owed her for looking after me when we were kids. John said since Ella faced more struggles, she deserved it all, despite knowing full well that our parents hurt me regularly as well. I was just not prepared to fight. My daughter needed my attention, and I wanted Tom to be by my side because Ella was acting aggressively. I asked them to leave and call Tom. We discussed this again and agreed we shouldn't give them the money. Ella calls me and I pick up, and she tells me she has to try again and that her relationship is rocky because they're frustrated they can't have a kid. I told her I would not give her the entire amount and just hung up. I feel guilty about all of this now, but I don't know if I should. Maybe since I don't have an immediate use for the money, I should have given it to her. Am I an idiot? What? You offered an equal split and she went, nah, I want it all? And is trying to pull out every emotionally manipulative tool in the book to get what she wants? Seems she turned out more like her mother than she'd like to admit. You're not the idiot. Not the idiot. You offered half and that was generous enough. It is unreasonable of them to expect you to give them all of the money. Additionally, her relationship is rocky because they're frustrated they can't have a kid. This line also concerns me. A baby can't save a marriage. In fact, it would probably make it worse. So if you want to give them half, that's fine, but not a penny more. That jumped out at me too. I wouldn't give her anything because a kid is going to be brought into a bad situation. She's just trying to guilt her into thinking that her giving her money for IVF will fix her crumbling marriage. It won't. Not the idiot. I think you were right and fair to offer to split the money with her, but in no way should she get all of it. This is the chance for you to ensure your child's future. And as her mother, it's only right for you to do so. Ella can look for alternate ways to become a mother that doesn't involve spending your part of the inheritance. Fertility problems are super unfortunate, but it doesn't give her the right to take your daughter's college money. I, 32 female, am now eight weeks pregnant with my third child. Nearly two weeks ago, my sister, 34, went into labor. Her little one unfortunately didn't make it. It was made worse by the fact that it took her four years to conceive. I only found out I was pregnant a couple of days after my sister lost hers. I figured it was best not to tell her, as it was too soon to put salt in the already gaping wound. However, my family does know that we were trying. My morning sickness was starting to act up in a couple of days leading up to the funeral, but I never considered canceling, as I needed to support my sister at this time. The service went according to plan, but problems started happening at the wake which comprised the entirety of my sister and brother-in-law's families and some friends at my brother-in-law's parents' house. My excuse for not drinking was easy, as I'm teetotal without being pregnant. Still, it got difficult when my nausea hit. Finally, I excused myself to the bathroom 
where I promptly threw up. My brother's wife's sister-in-law, one of my best friends, followed me up. She straight up said, you're pregnant, aren't you? I responded, yes, but don't tell anyone. Today's about making sis and brother-in-law comfortable. My sister-in-law congratulated me and said she understood. But unbeknownst to me, my brother-in-law's sister, nearly adult, was in her bedroom, next to the bathroom, and set up with the family and proceeded to spread the news around the wake before I managed to get downstairs. My sister confronted me crying and asked if it was true. I said yes, but I didn't mean for her to find out like this. She screamed that I could conceive easier than a darn rabbit. I admit this is true and something that I know has caused a bit of pain and I was flaunting my pregnancy while she suffered. It ended with her retreating to the bedroom and just screaming. It was awful. Everyone thinks I'm the idiot except my husband and sister-in-law. My brother-in-law is refusing to look me in the eye even after I explained the situation. He says I should have known that his sister was in her room. My mom said I could have easily told my sister-in-law that I caught a bug from one of my daughters. Still, I believe brother-in-law's sister, who has a habit of attention-seeking, would have spread rumors anyway, and it was a private conversation. My brother is fighting with my sister-in-law and believes that she shouldn't have asked. I think I just need an unbiased opinion. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. An eavesdropping teenager decided to spread gossip at exactly the worst time and knew what she was doing. I'm not going to call the grieving parents idiots because they're going through the worst right now. But every other adult in this situation who is acting like you are at fault here is. OP didn't plan it, didn't announce it. OP kept it to herself. How was she the idiot? Because OP threw up at the wrong time? Brother-in-law's sister is almost an adult. She fully knew what she was doing and chose to be malicious to everyone grieving downstairs of her own accord. She needs help. Not the idiot. Your sister's reaction was admittedly over the top, but she is hurting, so I'll give her a pass here. Pregnancy is not a zero-sum game, and you are not taking anything away from her by being pregnant. It's an awful situation, but you did the best you could without straight-up lying, which likely would have caused more problems for you down the road. Yeah, one person guessed it. You confirmed it, and it was supposed to stay between you two. The other girl that told everything is the insensitive idiot. Everyone else who says you should have lied are super immature. There was nothing wrong with telling the truth to the one person that guessed it, as this literally wasn't the issue. The issue was the kid that heard that it should be a secret and told someone anyways. How did the first person or set of people she told not sit her down and tell her not to tell anyone right then and choose not to say anything either. No one else is taking responsibility for not stopping the kid and not stopping the rumor right then and there. I, 26 female, have a sister, 28. We haven't talked in six years. We were very close to not talking for like four years before that and growing up, we never had a good relationship. She was the person teachers loved, the smart kid in our family and was naturally very gifted at academics. I never was. I struggled even with my best effort, and teachers hated me for it. So when I would start out with a teacher, I was Kate's sister, and they had such high expectations for me, but soon learned I wasn't Kate, and some hated me for it. Some were just unable to understand I was trying my best but wasn't smart. I never was smart like that. Our parents really wanted me to be more like Kate. They would praise the crap out of her, and tell me to try harder, to stop making excuses for my D grades. I found out I was artistic when I was like seven after a really awesome substitute teacher made a huge impact on me. It didn't really matter to my parents though. A year later, my sister started to hate me because she felt I was ruining her reputation with teachers. She told me our parents should just drop me off at a home for dumb kids. Over the years, our parents really did encourage her to try and make me better and would really encourage me to try to be more like her. Eventually, we just both hated each other to the point of no return. She told me I ruined her life and made life harder for her with my lack of a brain, and I should have never been born. We were nearly adults when that happened. Anyway, we haven't talked in years, when suddenly, she reaches out asking for a favor. Her future in-laws are close, and she needs me to show up and make it seem like we still talk, so they don't judge her. So I threw her words in her face about me never being born and told her I was too dumb to help her out. 
She told me I was petty and childish, and extended family sided with her on it, because it's been so long. Why would I do that sort of thing? Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. The only reason she re-established contact was to ask you to lie for her? Let her wallow in the consequences of her own choices. This in itself speaks volumes about the attitude the older sister and parents have towards OP. It's like saying, I have no interest in having a good relationship with you, making amends for being an idiot or any kind of effort in general, but I know this reflects badly on me. So you must lie and make me look good in front of the others. She just doesn't want her future husband and in-laws to find out how nasty and selfish she is before getting married. I feel sad for OP. She was hated for not being like her sister. Parents were just as bad. OP's sister saying for all those years that OP should have never been born, calling her names and dumb. And after years without talking to each other, Kate didn't apologize for all the things that happened in the past and went straight to asking for favors. An extended family siding with her ask, asking why would you say that? It just sucks. OP, I hope that you're way better without Kate and those family members. OP, you replied to Petty with Petty. Not good, not bad either. This might have been the chance to explore whether your sister actually feels sorry for what she said and did. Maybe the whole quick let's pretend we're family was her testing the waters to see if you would even be willing to reconcile. What really concerns me here is that you seem to direct your anger at your sister when your parents are responsible for this relationship. They taught her to devalue you. No wonder the young girl thought it was okay to say these things. No, 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 no. Sister is 28 years old. If she actually wanted to test the waters of reconciliation, you don't do that by asking someone you haven't spoken to in six plus years to fake being close to pull a fast one on someone else. You apologize for your disgusting behavior first and hope it's received. You seem to have missed the part where the sister was more concerned with her reputation amongst the teachers than with her sister's well-being. Looks to me like the golden child deserves to be reminded of what she said and that her words and actions did have consequences. She does not get a free pass just because the parents suck as well. I-25 female hate wearing bras. They're uncomfortable, constricting, and expensive. With work from home, I spent the last year and a half basically never wearing a bra and got used to it. Quite frankly, my breasts are non-existent anyways. I recently started going to a gym again and started working out braless. I should note that up until now, no one has ever pointed out anything wrong with me not wearing a bra. However, in the middle of a set of squats, yes, mid-squat, a guy comes up to me, taps me on the shoulder to get my attention, and tells me that my nipples are poking through my shirt. I get really irritated, because why is this guy staring at my nipples in the first place, and then stopping me mid-set to inform me? I get really annoyed, try to finish my set, but then this idiot literally grabs the bar as I ascend and re-racks it for me. He claimed it looked like I was having trouble with the last rep and that he had to come over to make sure I could do it, then notice my nipples. I'm really angry at this point and told him I didn't need his help finishing my set and why was he looking at my chest in the first place? He said he was going to spot me, but then noticed my chest and thought it'd be inappropriate. I pointed out that the safety bar was set so he wasn't needed, even if I did fail the set, but he just insisted people at gyms look out for each other. Going forward, I should probably wear a bra so other people wouldn't get uncomfortable and that it may help me stay more balanced in my squats. I'm literally the only girl at the weight section of the gym at the moment, and other guys who were squatting and failed sets never have to worry about this stuff. I've seen guys fail multiple sets in a row, and no one ever rushes to their aid, but I have a very slight pause and everyone thinks I need rescuing. So I'm now really annoyed and kind of uncomfortable that this guy I've never spoken to in my life thinks he's helping me and then dares to tell me how to dress. So I tell him, you have bigger breasts and nipples than I do. Maybe you should wear a bra so people won't get uncomfortable and you won't fail your squats. He then got defensive, saying he was just trying to help and called me a witch. Honestly, I'm not sure if I overreacted but I'm still kind of angry, so maybe that's clouding my judgment. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Report it to your gym. He had no right to comment on your body at all and no right to try and assert his help onto you. 
If he can't control himself from staring at another person's body, then he shouldn't be at a place where he's going to encounter all manner of bodies. Oh, the poor little muffin. He went to a random lady, being all condescending to her, and then harassed her only to be called out on his crap. But yeah, OP is a total idiot for kicking him in his ego balls. She has books, therefore. She should comfort him. He's just being a nice guy after all. Okay, sorry, laughing at the sarcasm here. I feel so awful for OP having to deal with this. I don't know why some people would ever think it's okay to act like that. Hope you keep your snarky retort sharp, because that was fierce. And who made him the nipple police? You are not the idiot. I'm male, but I can see he wanted to be a knight in shining armor for a damsel in distress. He was then obviously disappointed that you did not need saving, so defaulted to being an idiot in a poor attempt to save face and keep talking, which obviously allowed him to look at your nipples while also pretending, I'm not like other guys. You're being really unfair. He's obviously seen a lot of brawless women tip over and faceplant due to balance issues. It happens to us a lot, right ladies? But yeah, seriously? Imagine making a comment like that, getting a bad reaction, and then deciding that the best course of action was to keep talking? I'm a model tenant. Always paid my rent on time. I'm a bit neurotic when it comes to cleaning. Quiet and respectful, and I've been renting this house for eight years. The owners adore me. My old property manager was a peach to deal with, but she moved on to a different company, and I met my new property manager this morning when she came around to do an inspection. I took the day off work because I wanted to meet her, and it was going well until she passed me the report, saying that everything looked good, but I had to remove the two armchairs in the living room. I asked what was wrong with them, and she said that they were ratty and an eyesore. The said armchairs in question I've had for three years. However, I got them off a friend who didn't want them anymore. The leather is worn and torn. They're an awful shade of green slash brown, and yeah, they're ugly, but they're the most comfortable armchairs I've ever sunk into. They don't smell or anything either. I told her they've never been an issue before. The previous manager had shown photos of the living room to the owners, and they've never said anything either. She was rude and snapped, saying that the old manager isn't the property manager now. She is, and I should take her advice because she can and will feed back everything to the owners. I don't know if it was a power trip or something that she was on, but I scoffed and laughed at her and said, yeah, nah, get stuffed, kind of without thinking, then followed up with, sorry, but your job is to make sure the house is being maintained, not come in and tell me to ditch my stuff. The inspection ended on a sour note, obviously, and she ended with, if those armchairs are here next inspection, then I'll follow it up with the owners. Just remember that my feedback is a deciding factor in whether or not you continue to stay here. A bit rude. Didn't think much of it. Told my mom who said I was unnecessarily rude though. So that brings me here. Am I the idiot? Everyone's the idiot. Slight to you for telling her to get stuffed. Majority to her for telling you what you can and cannot have in your own personal dwelling space. Like really, they aren't causing damage to the unit. They aren't in the public eye and they aren't the property manager's problem. Not the idiot. If you have the contact info for the owners, you may want to give them a friendly heads up that the new property manager threatened to report you because you won't replace your furniture. It's inappropriate of her to have said anything about your furniture and to have threatened your housing over it. If she's doing stuff like this to good tenants, she's probably going to cause bigger issues for the landlords. Why on earth does the property manager think she gets to dictate what furniture you have inside of your home. I've never heard of such a thing. Not the idiot, obviously. I can't think of much you could have said to this petty tyrant that would have made you the idiot.